this thrilling game, we hope, underway. Yeah, they've lit the fuse, and let's watch the fireworks. Because this is going to be really, really tough in the opening 10, 15 minutes. It has to be. You've got to see who's going to be the boss out there, and you can see that Wigan, they are intent of making sure it's going to be the Cherry and White. So Leeds in possession in this first set of the half and of the match and Kevin Sinfield is immediately the man who goes into the dummy half roll there is the man who was named as hooker Adam Cuthbertson he takes the first pass and Sinfield again gets Leeds moving forward well it was always we knew that Adam Cuthbertson would not be in that role it was always going to be Kevin Sinfield maybe Danny Maguire might, might jump into it and even Stevie Ward Bowen takes the first tackle for Wigan the end of this set is going to be very interesting, Eddie. Where and to who do Wigan Warriors kick? Last week, their back three ran for 500 metres, to put that in perspective. The whole Warrington Wolf side ran for 1,000 metres. Your best bet is probably sticking it as high up in the air as you possibly can, and standing Briscoe, Hall and Hardacre still underneath the ball. You do not want to give them a good run at you, bring the ball back. Oh, a little surprise when he took that ball, trying to offload in these conditions. A little bit of nerves coming through there. Ben Flower wasn't anticipating that. That hit a Leeds player, I think it was Cuthbertson, so that play on. Mitch, Mitch Garvin it was, Steve-O. He got this considerable chest to it. The ball bouncing uh, kindly for Leeds. They're in possession on their own 40-metre line. This is the first tackle, this later set, the second set that uh, Leeds have had possession. Ablett gets them over the halfway line. It's so important, the kicking game tonight, in these very, very wet conditions, and realise it as well. Nice little move there by uh, by Kevin Sinfield, running from the dummy half position. Make sure that the Wigan first and second markers are going to be alert. Stevie Ward's back in the lead side. He's missed the last five. Here is Cuthbertson, drops the pass off to Moon. And Moon sees a gap, and it's quickly filled by Joel Tompkins. Sinfield, quick play the ball. It's with Danny Maguire. Maguire gets it to Ryan Hall. And Josh Charney was in his face immediately. Ball's come free. Has Maguire scored? Was there a foot in touch? What's going to be the decision about a possible knock-on? It'll need checking, I think. It's bound to be handed up to Shawley, and I think Richard Silverwood's going to do that. Let's see what the decision on the field is. It's no try, Stuart Cummings. Yes, it is. There was an incident where the ball came out just before. Just Judge Clint Sharrod called that play on. Uh, called for six more, but he thinks he's in touch, so that's what he's been uh, given as no try, because he's in touch. So it's played at by uh, Wigan, and he's trying to offload, so it's play on from that. And it's uh, six tackles to go. Does he keep his foot out of touch? Before he gets the ball down, that's the, the key question. Well, Clint Shadow needs to get out of the way. And we might find out. Well, you can see that Charlie deliberately knocks the ball out of the grasp of Brian Hall. So that's play on. That's yeah. play on from there. That's play on from there. So we go to the touchdown. Does he keep his feet out of touch? It's just knocked out by uh, Charlie as he's trying to offload it. Here's the decision. Well, that's a try for me. It looks like a try. He's certainly uh, one leg's up in the air. Where's the other one? Well, that's, that's, that looks like it's going to be a try. Both feet are not touching the line. It doesn't matter that it's um, in touch, but on top of the player. I think this will be given. Yeah, you can see that the both the boots are in the air as it goes over the whitewash. And this, my friend, should be T.R.Y. There is nothing, nothing of Danny Maguire's body touching the line, so the, I can't see anything that would uh, disallow this try. So I think the, uh, there's enough evidence there from the video refs to overturn that. Well, Danny what Maguire's had some hip? bad luck. He's had some bad luck, Eddie, in games against Wigan. He's already had two tries disallowed. You'd have to think the balance of probability that's a try. What about his hip or his upper thigh, Stuart? I'm just well, it, having it, a close look at that at the moment. It, it's off the ground, Eddie. Yeah, we have to remember, it, it's got to touch the line. It's got to actually, some part of his body actually has to touch the line. Doesn't matter that it's on um, Josh Charnley and, in, you know, as, as good as in touch, if you like, but no, there's, there's nothing touching the line there, nothing uh, at all. There's a shadow underneath his hip there. This might be turned over. It should be. Grounding's no problem. They've checked just about everything now. But it's got to be T.R.Y. It's quite clear, look. He's nowhere near the whitewash. The more this goes on, the more we have to remember that uh, they have to be convinced that this is uh, that there's enough evidence to overturn the on-field decision of no try. 
the try is given to Danny Maguire on his 399th career appearance, by the way. He's just registered his 19th try against Wigan in that career. Wonderful stuff on that short blind side. And you see Maguire, and when Charlie knocks it loose, Danny Maguire is so very quick to pick up on this. He can see it hit the ground and he goes into the corner. That is a tremendous effort from the halfback, Danny Maguire. Well, he knows the history, Phil, that you know as well. He looked at the referee and said, that's a try. You can't deny me this one, surely. Well, he scored what probably would have been the try of the season at the DW Stadium this year. It was controversially ruled out for an obstruction on that occasion. He also had one disallowed in a magic game at the Etihad Stadium when Lee has met, so he'll be delighted that in the end one of those 50-50 calls, shall we say, went their way. And so here's a chance then for Kevin Sinfield to add the extras. Difficult kick, slippy conditions, and he's just got it on target. It's straight inside the post. Managed to grab a quick word today, Eddie, with the assistant coach of the Catalan Dragons, Michael Monaghan, and he said, when you're coming up against the Leeds Rhinos, it's not your defensive structure that has to be good, it's your one-on-one -on -one tackles that has to be brilliant. Sean Wayne will have drilled that into his side. We're coming up against the Leeds Rhinos side that love to offload the ball right across the field. Keep the integrity of your line, but when you make contact, you have got to stop the ball. Well, it was obvious by the, the shot that we've got of the Wigan coach, Sean Wayne, that uh, he did not agree with the video referees. But I think they've got it absolutely spot on, and they nearly made a real, real mess of this. How's that? Bit of ballet dancing there from Tom Briscoe. Yes, he did well to stop himself from going over the whitewash. Very good kickoff from Matty Bowen. Here is... Ablett and he goes down under the challenge of three. Sinfield wants to get on with it quickly. Here comes Jamie Peacock. There was a bit of an elbow raise then into the throat of Tony Club. He certainly didn't miss him, that's for sure. Maguire drops the pass on, Mitch Garbutt takes it forward. Good tackling there. And it had to be by Ben Flower. They've reached the fifth though. Here's the kick from. Maguire skims off the turf and into the arms of Bowen. Ooh, good hit there. Stevie Ward right over the top. No chance of the fullback offloading there. He felt it as well. Five out, Stevie Ward with an ankle injury. And by the looks of this, fully fit. Ready to resume. If that will uh, figure in Barry and Terry's biggest hits this week that you'll be able to catch up with on the website. Just got caught, caught out there, Leeds, not standing square, you can see there. Cuthbertson, very, very lazy. That could be very costly indeed. Just a lack of concentration by Cuthbertson then. So Joel Tompkins and uh, that penalty has gifted Wigan a few metres inside this uh, Leeds territory here. Got the cheap meters downfield as a result of that kick. McAlorum waits at dummy half for the Warriors. Will go left and he find George Williams. He then finds Liam Farrell. Farrell goes down on tackle number three. McAlorum at dummy half. New two-year deal agreed and signed this week. An extension to his contract. Flower takes it forward once again. Will they go early? Will Matty Smith opt for the kick into the corner? Well, here is Matty Smith. No, he doesn't. He finds Bowen. Bowen trying to jink his way past the line, but that's good defence again from Stevie Ward and Carl Ablett. They've reached the fifth tackle, so here's the last. Lachlan shoots the pass to Smith. It goes further wide to Williams. Williams then will put it in behind the defenders. Briscoe has to be quick. Oh, he's dropped it. And it's Liam a try. Farrell has come up with the score. This if is a he has grounded it properly. Sorry, Eddie, but this is five. definitely a try as far as I'm concerned. We have a try. Let's make sure there's no push. Well, they had the opportunity to scoot it away, and uh, he didn't. He wasn't successful. That's for sure. Stewart it was a beautiful is, kick through. Stewart is looking for a push in the back as well as the grounding. Yeah, it's just on the chase through. All the chases are on side from the kick. Does Tom Briscoe get pushed as he's trying to pick the ball up? He doesn't actually have the ball at that time, so. There shouldn't be any contact on him at all. It's pushed before the ball gets to him, isn't it? Well, that's what they're arguing. That's what they're, they're going to be looking at. So they're all running, for, um, running for the ball. Are they trying to compete for the ball, or is that a shove on the far side there? Six and two threes, isn't it? Really? 
But it certainly looks like he's playing Briscoe rather than the other way around, Manfredi. Well, Manfredi, he certainly gets a hand there. It's quite clear. And it's a pushing hand. And Tell this should Mike, isn't it? this should be turned down. Well, they're certainly paying a lot of attention to it. The decision was a try on the field. Well, well they've turned one round already. They have. Well, he's certainly pushed before he gets the ball anywhere near his hand. There, it's, you can see quite clearly that Manfredi has got contact with him. I think we can go back to a game here last uh, last season involving Tom Briscoe and Danny Brough. When a, a similar try was disallowed. I think there's enough there to disallow that try. Enough contact on, on Tom Briscoe. I agree. But good work, though, by uh, Farrell. Always play for the whistle. And Farrell was very, very quick. Got there before Hardegger could. Well, they've not looked at the grounding yet. I think this will be turned down, Eddie. Now oh. they're looking at the grounding, and Farrell grounds it cleanly. Well, they obviously must be satisfied. Remember, the process is that um, all three officials involved in this, the on-field referee and the two video referees, all have an independent decision, and it goes with a majority decision. And it's turned down again. The, it has been turned upside down again, rather. The on-field decision, Liam Farrell gets the try. And uh, Liam Farrell, his uh, man of the match performance against Huddersfield last week. And he got a try then, he created another for George Williams, that's try number 10. Just let me clarify, Steve, it was sent up for the try. My apologies, it was sent yeah. up for the try, it's confirmed for the try. Yeah, and uh, they obviously didn't feel that there was a push on there, and I thought there was, but Tom Crashley and Phil Bentham are the video referees tonight. It was a beautiful kick, lovely kick there. George Williams, he really is an artist when it comes to the little grubber. Watch this. He picks it out. No. And Smith has missed with the conversion. So Wigan still behind, leads ahead 6-4. Well, I didn't think it was a try, Mike, I agree with you, but I do agree that George Williams' kicking game on this ground is sensational. He's done a chip earlier in the season, which Joe Burgess caught to the full, scored in that part of the field. He was shown the difficult, awkward, low one, which Tom Briscoe wasn't able to take. I think because he was illegally pushed, the referee doesn't, and we've got a 6-4 score. You were gesturing to me up here, Eddie, you're right, there is, there is a way to ease Tom Briscoe away from the ball, make contact, which we accept in the game rugby league, just using his hips would have been a smarter option. Well, he got away with it in the end, but I felt with the hand on the back, going off precedent, that that would have been disallowed by the, by the video referees. Wasn't on that occasion. And you've also got to give credit to the man that's just about to play the ball as well. Liam Farrell, he played to, played to the whistle continued on, plonked it down, thought there might be an opportunity, got the nod. Club to the halfway line, McAlorum dummy half, finds Matty Smith, he goes for the corner and for territory Great and kick. finds the mark perfectly. That's important, Eddie, because if that lands in the hands of Ryan Hall, as we saw with the very first kick of the game, he's going to charge it back at you, one of the biggest men in the field. So this is certainly an option, if you don't put them under a bomb and stand them still, you can kick it into touch. But as was pointed out to me, that's just going to get play into the hands of some of these Leeds Rhinos forwards who love to offload the ball, are full of energy, but this will give them a well-needed well, well a well -needed rest, even though it's early in the game. So they're going to have to mix up this kicking. Yeah, interesting, the way that uh, Matty Smith didn't wait till the last, went on the fourth. And this is where the Wigan defence has to really step up. Their aim, of course, is to prevent... Oh, that, that is a sin. You get a good kick, good chase, get the defence sorted out, and then lack of communication. And uh, they set off well before, and I think you'd have to say that Liam Farrell jumped the gun. There was a few of them, wasn't there, in front of the referee when that ball was played. Here's Stevie Ward again. Wigan's last defeat, by the way, at Warrington, 2nd of July, 6 points to 17. They're back there next Friday. With all their away games in these Super 8s are repeat fixtures that they lost in the regular season. And they turn things around here tonight. Garber takes it forward for the Rhinos once again. Sinfield, come this way and find Maguire. He is Singleton now. Fifth tackle, last one coming up for Wigan. F4 at Leeds for Wigan to defend. Maguire with the high kick. Bowen claims it airborne. Good chase by Maguire. Wait. 
Yeah, he did well, did uh, Manny Bowen. Spun in the air, made sure that uh, there was no chance of dislodging the ball. It's going to be interesting, you know, Brian McDermott can uh, thank his lucky stars in many ways that he has the likes of Rob Barrow on there because, you know, Paul Aiden, oh, they're lucky to get away with that as well. That was a shocking pass. This is a good set so far from Leeds defensively. Look where we're going to pend. The point I was making, Eddie, is, is regards to that, you know, Paul Aiden is out for the season. And, uh, of course, Rob Barrow can take that hooking role. But, you know, you've got the, the, the brains of Kevin Sinfield. There he is on the sideline, Barrow. And he'll be brought into the game, I'm sure, when some of these uh, Wigan forwards are tiring. That's a ricochet. That should be play on. It is. Played at, says the referee. Briscoe takes all the time he needs to make sure he doesn't uh, spill the ball in the greasy conditions we've got at Headingley tonight. The rain, I think, has actually stopped, but the pitch is sodden. But it's a wonderful condition, isn't it? To say the amount of water that we've had. It was siling down this morning. Garbutt again for the Rhinos. Sinfield, short ball to Maguire. Maguire then to Ablett, switches the direction of this attack. And Ablett thought about the offload as he was going down. Good work on that uh, far side by Gelling and Farrell. Down the short side goes Sinfield, finds Callum Watkins, he releases it to Ablett. Here now is Adam Cuthbertson. Cuthbertson fires a good ball to Hardacre, he finds Joel Moon. Moon slides the kick in for Hall to chase. It's a chase between Hall and Charnley, and Charnley wins the race on that occasion. Crafty play, though, by the centre, Joel Moon. Everyone perhaps thought that he might have tried to suck in the winger. Charnley was aware of that, a neat little kick into the corner, but that was good work. And good work by Charnley as well. He could see that uh, Ryan Hall right behind him. You know, John Bateman's a great player and a wonderful defender. I mean, he's playing against arguably one of the best centres in this competition in... Uh, Joel Moon and defending well against him. It doesn't look like he's at all worried or anxious when he gets the ball. You're right. If Joel Moon's not the best centre, uh, Phil, the best centre is on the other side of the field and Callum Watkins. There's two huge threats. And you'd be pretty confident with John Bateman there that he might be able to keep Joel Moon quiet at periods in this game. But like you just showed there, he's got some wonderful touches, Joel Moon, and he will have an influence on this left hand side of the field. Another great offload from Briscoe finds Sinfield. He then finds uh, Peacock. Just three away wins all year for Wigan, by the way. Two of those at Huddersfield and Hull have come. Oh, he's pinched four meetings. He's pinched the ball. He has, Liam Farrell has, he's nicked it. Well, the ref said he tried to offload it, which seemed strange. That was his decision. He thought that Peacock was trying to get it free. I don't know if it... But the ref showed it. Oops, that's... I, th I think Peacock just lost it. That was off flower, it went backwards. Here is Farrell again, enveloped by the tackle from Adam Cuthbertson. Well, you'd think the pitch is as dry as a bone, sun was shining, offload after offload. Just shows, you the, just shows you the quality and the, the skill factor, Eddie. They're quite keen to keep this ball alive. Yes, they are. Are you going to get a long kick here? They've just dropped back to Tom Briscoe. They seem to think that that part of the field is the best one, but... This is where Hardacre gets more dangerous. Once you start to get to 20, 25 minutes of the match, the players are starting to fatigue, the gaps tend to widen, maybe not with a quarter of these two sides, but kicks in the next 10 or 15 minutes tend to be ones that the wingers and fullbacks enjoy the most. I'll tell you one thing, Eddie. The official Richard Silverwood is having a devil of a job to keep him back the 10 metres. They're getting, they're getting back about eight. It is, and both sides are doing it, both are getting away with it, he's got to start giving a penalty here, there and everywhere because they're not going back to 10. There's your trilogy, Eddie. Hardinger catches the ball, runs it in, next one is Briscoe and next one is Hall. You'll see that throughout the game. Well, the Wigan have got the ball back. Yes, they do have the ball back, courtesy of Bateman's alertness. He finds a lot of them after the play the ball. Yeah, lack of uh, understanding. It looks as though Stevie Ward slipped. Look at that, though. Five men to tackle Sean O'Lock, and they're certainly trying to win the control around that area, putting five players in there. It means you have to do a lot of running, though, to get back in the defensive line in your position. Matty Smith now for Wigan. Back it comes to Matty Bowen. He's in great form at the moment, is Bowen. He wants to leave Wigan on a high, and there would no higher than going to Old Trafford for the grand final. Now then, is this going to go over to Briscoe's corner? I just get the impression it might be. It's with O'Loughlin in the middle. Finds Smith. Smith then to Williams. Another little kick of beauty, but a little bit too long. Manfredi was after it. And again, a smart little move there. That's been worked out on the, the training paddock, that's for sure. Again, 
George Williams with a, a dainty kick, just a little bit too strong in the end. But the idea, near perfect. He knows it as well. Tommy Lulawai behind Sean Wayne, just having a word in the coach's ear as well. Sean being lifted off his seat. There he is, Thomas Lulawai, two tries in the... Last win for Wigan on this ground, 2012. Tommy Lulai will have appreciated what happened there. The more times they passed the ball, the more Tom Briscoe, the defending winger, was forced to move up off the line, clearing space for a kick in behind him. Had that kick been any way better, Tom Briscoe wouldn't have got anywhere near the ball and Don Pramfrey would have been in for a try. As we see, the best centre in the competition, Callum Watkins, dispossessed of the ball, knock on given. Yes, came out on impact is the view of the referee Richard Silverwood, so Wigan with head and feet at this scrum. It's, and it's always a high risk, Eddie, when you when you go into the would-be defenders with the ball carrying arm, and that's exactly what Callum Watkins did. Lost control. Bowen didn't on that challenge, so he will get to his feet and play it to Tomkins. Solid defence. Solid defence by Leeds. There was no way through then for Ben Flower. McAlorum, Smith, short ball, O'Loughlin. He tried to spin his way to the line, they got to him eventually. McAlorum off the ground and Williams has seen a gap and it was quickly closed by a great tackle by Singleton. Farrell, ooh, untidily, he finds club. He just lost the momentum there slightly, Wigan. The club will keep those legs going. Club and Ablett having a bit of a go at each other. Williams dabs the kick in, Bowen's after it! What's happening oh, here? Oh, he missed it. He can't believe it. It was a set-piece move. Beautiful kick through. Again, Williams, he knew exactly what he had to do, but he missed it. He can't believe it. He has another go, and it's gone over the whitewash. Mike, I think you've got to give Zach Hardaker some credit there because he made life more difficult. He turned himself, didn't he? Put himself into the, the, the zone in which that ball went, and it made it more, more problem for... Uh, Matt Bowen to get to it. Look, he's pushed around the outside of him. Can't quite get to where he wants to be. What about the quick thinking of the player, Matt Bowen? He knew he had to get his body back into the in goal. He couldn't just slap out of the ball and touch it down. He did everything he could to get his body back in, then get his hand down. Wasn't able to do it. It shows you what a very intelligent player, the height of his game, thinking all the time. Well, at least uh, for the last couple of play the balls, we've seen the official Silverwood take them back. That is a neat kick. OK, it's a bit too strong. But they'll be able to line up on that third. He's disappointed with it is uh, Danny Maguire. Yes, he is, because he surrendered 20 metres there with that kick. He looks dirty, isn't it, Eddie, by the time this tackle takes place? That, Catalan Eddie? Dragons are leading at the uh, home of the Giants, 6-0. Now then, Catalan One beat Saints Eddie. last week. Huddersfield were oh. losing to no. Wigan. And the Catalan Dragons, six up. Two, go! here tonight in week two and that will be cheered to the rafters in Castleford that later score after last night's win and those two they have to play the, I think it's the week after Wembley the Huddersfield Giants and the Castleford Tigers and that could easily decide the fourth and final spot in these Super 8s Smith to O'Loughlin he drills the ball into touch safety first no frills nothing fancy no, he's working for fancy stuff, really. No, he's working on percentage. Realizes that uh, with the ball, it is very wet indeed. And, uh, he takes the option, hoping that they can force it. They've done it a couple of times. They force leads into uh, losing possession. The last one was uh, Callum Watkins, of course. Ryan Hall now for the Rhinos. Importance of the League Leaders' Shield, they will get the home game, of course, in the semi-finals of the uh, Super League competition when it comes around. But also, they will get the um, place in the World Club Series next year, no matter what happens at Old Trafford. That's whoever wins the League Leaders' Shield. Oh, Watkins has released the ball. Ooh, and that he... was touched then by Gelling. I tell you what, Tom Briscoe was very fortunate. Instead of dropping onto the football, he tried to just... He got to it with a foot, but it was a feeble attempt. Still nil-nil at St. Helens. That match available for you on our website. And we'll have highlights of both of the games being played elsewhere tonight after the match has finished here. Saints against Hull available on the Sky Sports for iPad 
And you can also log into Sky Sports Extra for that. But watch this one. Don't leave Leeds and Wigan. You can watch the other one. Have them both on, if you like. Good, com away. good combination there, Eddie, with Watkins and Tom Brisco. And now, where's Guthberton? Will he throw it? Has he lost control? Well, it appeared that way, but Sinfield has uh, got away with it. Maguire dabs it to the end. And Moon has touched down. And the try is given without reference upstairs. But was there a knock on by Kevin Sinfield? Did he lose the ball underneath the Wigan sticks? Controversial incident. It appeared as though it just wobbled a little bit out of Sinfield's hand. Well, we're going to try it on three occasions. This is the incident. Does he lose control? Oh, that's difficult. I think he does. He's lost that ball. Yep. It was the, the arm that was pulled out of the way, and he's uh, lost the ball on the ground that wasn't seen by the officials. Well, isn't it amazing? We're going to try it on three occasions to put the little dink through. It hadn't come off the first time that Leeds put it. Maguire puts it through, and Joel Moore. Boy, wasn't he quick. In fact, I'm surprised the official didn't go upstairs. He looks a little bit offside. And it was the merest of touches by Joel Moon, but the merest of touches these days is all that matters. It all came about, though, because Leeds got some broken field play. I think the ball was flicked backwards. They, they waved the tackle count. They took a risk on an offload. But then once they got that quicker play of the ball, and... Wigan weren't able to control them around that area. They look more dangerous. Tries in each of his last four appearances now for Joel Moon. Sinfield will surely add this, and he does. And that leads have a 12 points to four advantage just over midway through this first half. And very fortunate as far as I'm concerned. I think he's lost control there. Sinfield was lucky to be able to just wrap the, the big thumb and fingers round it. You know, John Wells super zoomed that at half time. We might look at the whether Joel Tompkins actually has his hand on Kevin Sinfield's hand to actually pull the hand away from the ball, no longer the stripping the ball, but moving the arm, Mike, is maybe another way of getting that ball to be dispossessed when there's a lot of resting takes place in that tackle. Well, it, it's allowed. You can't go for the ball, obviously, but uh, you can go for the carrying arm. He had an interesting build-up to the game, Eddie, today. Kevin Sinfield, he was an interested observer sitting in the stands watching his, his soon-to-be teammates, Carnegie Rugby Union side, take on the Romanians. The Romanians prepared for the upcoming World Cup. Ten-all draw at the end of that one. Both teams getting a good response from the South Stand here at Headingley. One try apiece. Well, yeah, the, the South Stand uh, didn't say much, I must say, but maybe that's... That's as good as it gets on rugby league land for rugby union. Well, to be fair, Eddie, if they both got a try, it's an outstanding game. 12-4 here, penalty to Leeds. Again, lack of concentration by John Bateman. They just seem to be uh, a little bit lax, and, and you can see that there's also a little bit of a, an elbow, the forearm into the face of the fullback Hardacre. I don't know why they even bother with that. You're not going to hurt anybody. Luluai is out there. And he takes in the first drive on this next set for Leeds. Sinfield dummy half, now Peacock. Lee Mossop is after him. Lee Mossop, the subject of a little nibble by Leeds, apparently, according to reports, when he came back from Parramatta and decided to rejoin the Wigan Warriors. And here is a penalty for a high shot on Stevie Ward. Yeah. Joel yeah. Tompkins is the culprit. Yeah, you can see quite clearly he's trying to... The hand is uh, into the ear region, so therefore it must be classified as a head-eye shot. This is unbelievable. Uh, I, was, I, I was wondering why they didn't go for the two. Didn't he tap it once? Did not why tap that ball? I didn't see any, but they certainly hadn't made any decision. The referee hadn't uh, told them or given them the mark to carry on, so I think they were okay. Well, it did surprise me. Look for for a moment there that uh, Simfield was going to tap it, and then he says, "I'll, I'll go for the two, sir." It was just a bit before that, right? What? Stood on the mark, tapped it. I think the referee's telling him to wait there. He wants to get back on the out of the way and onto the, the goal the line. The referee hadn't got himself into position. 
Does it surprise you they're taking the two here? Uh, no, I'd take the two. I told you he was watching the game before. <laughs> it won't be your right, maybe he's getting ready. Here we go, Kevin Sinfield. I mean, he'd be, he's been brilliant at um, goal kicking in this competition. Imagine what he'd be like when he switches sides. Sinfield adds two more points and leads ahead 14 4, the gap now 10. Yeah, it's a, it's a superb goal kicker. And the, the stats tell it all, don't they? Eddie? What a great player, what a great acquisition he has been to rugby league. It's a shame in many ways that he's actually joining the opposition. But that's the way of the world these days. Lulawai will run it back from the kickoff for Leeds. We're going to got to be careful now. They, they, they cannot concede another try. They really have got to just sort of settle down a little bit. They're not, uh, they're not seem to be talking to each other. Another yeah. offload from Cuthbert and something he's done all year for the Leeds Rhinos. Yeah, looking back at the figures, Eddie, they'll win a game and they'll offload the ball at least 17, 18 times, possibly more. Some games have gone up to 26, 27, I think it was against Wolves last time. That'll be a big thing that we're going to have worked on this, this week. Shut down the Leeds Rhinos offloads. Don't let them play off the back of that. All square at Huddersfield now, the Giants and the Catalan Dragons, you might have noticed St Helens have taken a six-point lead in the other game against Hull FC. Well, we said the defence from both sides are going to be ruthless, and i tell you what, it is. And there's quite a lot of uh, chit-chat going on amongst the... Hang on, somebody's down. I think it's it Cuthbertson, is it? No, it's not. No, it isn't. It's A-Church, I think. It's Mitch A-Church. Yeah, it is. And they're very concerned about him. Oh, he got the, he got the hip. <laughs> Bateman's hip, right into. Oh, that is a solid impact. Well, by the looks of that picture, I don't think we'll be seeing the Che Church again this evening. When he recovers from this, he was out cold, wasn't he? Let's hope he's all right. Yeah, yeah, you see Brian McDermott. Uh, ensuring that uh, if he has to leave the field of play that they can organize themselves very quickly it's Mitch A. Church's first game back in the first team since the magic weekend so there's, a, there's obviously a problem for him here Jimmy Kynors will will probably slot in there Eddie we hope Mitch A. Church is okay excellent attention from the medical staff but Brian McDermott will be going through his permutations now as you say, it's un unlikely he'd come back down. Brian McDermott will have to do with just three interchange players. Jimmy Kynors provides him great versatility there. More no readily, known more readily, I should say, as a centre. Has been very good since Brian McDermott put him into the second row this year. Able He's replacement passed. for the he is stricken Mitch A. Church. A very able replacement. Brian McDermott passing the message down what he wants to happen next. Um, we will see Wakefield and Bradford in the, the qualifiers. The Super 8 qualifiers, the middle eights, uh, Saturday at 3 on Sky Sports 3. And don't forget on Sky Sports Extra, which is available now on the iPad app. And via the website, it's St. Helens and Hull. And Saints were 6-0 up there last time we heard. There's another match on the uh, Sky Sports Extra channel on the website on Sunday as well. Well, the most in important aspect is that uh, the player's welfare. Yeah, we're lucky, aren't we? It stopped straight away. I think you're right, mate. Most people who played rugby league at some time had that, uh, suffered that sort of accident where they've banged their head on the, the hip of the person they're trying to tackle. And uh, Leeds' job now is really to make sure he gets off the field safely and find a way of replacing him successfully because there have been some massive tackles from both teams. John Bateman runs the ball particularly hard. Managed to just get between two or three defenders, and I think that's the reason why we had that bump on the side of the head. And when you hit your head on the side of some of these rugby league players' bodies, it's like hitting a, a piece of concrete. It really is. They are so honed and toned. But 14-4 to the Leeds Rhinos here. 
and uh, just hearing that Hull have just scored at St Helens so while we've got this break in play let's just take a look at what's happened at Langtree Park fellas here it is now Travis Burns it was a pass but it's been intercepted by Mark Sneed now it's a foot race Sneed is quick and he's just gonna well that's Mark Sneed who gets the ball away and it's uh, Norton who goes over he's done well with Adam try. Swift chasing him hasn't he he showed some toe there I thought Adam, I would have backed Adam Swift to reel in Mark Sneed. That's a that's a big score for Hull FC in that game. It is six six against the champions. Isn't it amazing that over the last four or five weeks we've had so many intercepts, length of the field tries. You think it's because teams are trying to predict and read what the attack's going to come at them, so they've seen it perhaps on videos in rehearsals during the week, building up to it. Obviously, these teams have played twenty odd games this year. A lot of what they do, they've done in the last 20 weeks. So you can sort of guesstimate what's going to come at you. And if you put yourself in the right place, then very often you can pick off the pass. Yeah, I'd agree with you there on that. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's a soft pass that someone maybe who just put himself out of position and uh, takes a gamble. If they miss it, of course, then they, they create an overlap for the attacking side. And we saw last night that um, Liam Finn, not the best kick, was it, on the last, and uh, Myler went right into the red basket Myler went right to the length of the field and, and actually in many ways brought uh, Warrington back into the game it wasn't to be Liam Finn made amends with uh, the drop goal which put a smile on my face three tries have been scored tonight in the match between the Huddersfield Giants and the Catalan Dragons let's take a look at those uh, right now and uh, Scott Giroux was the hero of the hour uh, last Hi. week and I think that uh, Looked like Todd Carney is back in the yeah, side. Yeah, he's, he's tormented them, didn't he, up at the Magic Weekend. He's back in, playing alongside Scott Giroux in the halves. And I see, you'd imagine Huddersfield hit back here. Jack Hughes on his way to Warrington next year. Wigan player, former Wigan player, Danny Brough. Try from the scrum, Mike. Yep. You don't want to abolish that. Listen, I spoke to some of the Huddersfield players about Aaron Murphy. They said he's the most consistent player at that club. Doesn't get the recognition of some of the other bigger names, but Aaron Murphy will be one of the first names they put down on the team sheet. Never lets them down. He's got versatility. Very, very, very solid player and always contributes. Well, I will certainly want a, a clip of that because it is a rarity. <laughs> but I must say that uh, the quality that we saw there from Danny Brough is such a talented player. Threw the dummy, made the step, and then missed a man out and it created the overlap. Looks like we might have a decent day weather-wise tomorrow. Look at that sunset. The sun hasn't been out all day. Going back to your Danny Brough point, Mike, if we're not careful, he'll be one of the best players never to play in a grand final. If he doesn't start to achieve that very soon, obviously he's on the wrong side of 30 now, and every year it gets harder for him to get there. We've got another try coming in for you from St Helens, and uh, the champions have scored this. I understand. Roby, typically at dummy half. Uh, Walsh getting the ball away, and here is Adam Swift squeezing in in the corner. Another lovely try from a winger this year. So the champions hit the front. He's been in fine form as well, hasn't he, Swift? We've seen some tremendous tries from wingers this year. And since they brought that new rule in anywhere, you know, if you touch the, the corner post, it doesn't count. Well, you can watch that on your iPad or you can watch it on the website, Saints against Hull FC. The best way is to uh, have a look at that in one corner of your eye and keep both or one and three quarters of the eyes on this. What's happening here once the play uh, resumes after this lengthy injury delay? Interestingly, Eddie, the players haven't moved much, in particular this man, Michael McAlorma, may be a welcome break for him. One of the best hookers in the league. I've watched his defence at the start of this game. Very aggressive as ever. He's a real bedrock of the Wigan Warriors side. I did hear a whisper that after the Paul Aiton injury, the announcement, sorry, from Paul Aiton that he was going to uh, Catalan Dragons at the end of next year, that there was an inquiry made by the Leeds Rhinos as to the availability of Michael McAlorm and could he come back to his home city of the Leeds Rhinos. So Wigan rebuffed that. He signed an extension, but you can see how prized he is amongst all the Super League clubs. He's, he is up there with the best hookers in the league, and that's a league that's got the likes of James Roby in their, in their ranks. Well, Let's it would take have been a look at the uh, tries from here now, uh, shall we? Bring you right up to date in case you're just uh, joining us. This was the first one. Well, you can see there that uh, it was knocked out by Charnley and a quick thinking by Kevin Singfield. Full credit, though, to Wigan. And uh, the man at the moment, George Williams, has been in tremendous form. This was 
Well, <laughs> it looked perhaps that he was pushed, but it was given. But this is superb, isn't it? I'm not so sure that Moon was on side there, but the official, Richard Silverwood, didn't intend to go upstairs, gave it. So it, it's still game on. Remember, the Sinfield goal made it a 10-point lead by the home side. Interesting as well, Eddie, you know, Sean Wayne in the build-up to this game um, had a little bit of a shot at you and I, saying that we were pretty confident that the, the Leeds Rhinos may get all three trophies. Well, he said we've been, we've been uh, pumping them up, which we have. And uh, rightly so, the way that they've been playing. Well, there's been a long delay here in the Leeds crowd and everyone in the ground applauding as Mitch Achurch uh, is taken from this field on a stretcher. Let's hope he is OK. Rhinos ahead 14-4, just let me remind you in case you've forgotten. Sad for Mitch, Mitch Achurch, been out since the Magic Weekend in May. And he came on as a sub, he's missed 10, making a bid to stay in the side for the run on, uh, run in rather, to the what they hope will be the grand final, and also Wembley in a fortnight. Well, that's a shame to see him leave the field. Yeah, let's Not hope been he's on that long either, because only just off the bench. Yeah, let's hope that he's going to be a okay. He'll certainly get the best treatment, and that is for sure. So we're back in, uh, we're back in action. As you say, fellas, the players of both sides, they sort of hung around, didn't they? They weren't. It's a warm night. They didn't have to keep particularly warm, but. Uh, I think it's your brain more than your body here. I think the concentration, we've just seen them there, can see the penalty. Being in the right place here, having your brain switched back on here now after such a long break, whilst the uh, Mitch was taken from the field. Well, it's a, it's a period like this, uh, Phil, when you know that, the, that both sides have been just stood around for a while, and is when you, you impact is the individual player, the guy who will take on, maybe do the little chip over the top. Something completely different that the defence perhaps is not expecting. Here is McAlorum. A bit of a wrestle between Peacock, Lulawai and him, and Cuthbertson coming in for good measure as well. Matty Smith, all the way to Mossop, the South Sand believed that was forward, Richard Silverwood didn't. Mossop ten metres out, here we go, with George Williams. Not the best, but it finds its way to Matty Bowen. And down he goes on tackle number five, so last one coming up here for Wigan. With Matty Smith, he'll hoist it wide again, putting Briscoe under pressure. That's knocked forward by Gelling. And well, Freely was claiming it, but uh, there was definite knock-on. Yeah, good position. Good kick as well, though, from Matty Smith. And you could see, I think it was Anthony Gellin that got uh, got the finger to it. Manfredi came came later. Good position by Richard Silverwood. No, this guy's done quite well since he's arrived at uh, Leeds. Mitch Garber. Not many people knew much about him. weren't great expectations of him. But if his job's to go forward and then defend in the middle of the field, and he's done that remarkably well in the four games he's played so far for Leeds, and seems to find another good prop. Brought him in mid-season. And Cuthbertson, who has been a revelation since he came at the start of the season. Certainly has, but uh, Wigan have done well. You know, he's only had uh, two really good offloads by this time. 30 minutes into the game, he's, he's nearly in double figures. Sinfield will kick from dummy half. A deep kick, a deep Great kick, kick. And it stays Unbelievable. in the field of play. Great chase led by Ablett as well. You could see the ball and the back spin on it. And it doesn't just come about. They spend hour after hour making sure that they can get the backspin on that. There was tremendous stuff from Kevin Sinfield. Look where it's left Wigan, trying to get out of their own corner. Bateman will try and do that for them now, running straight at uh, Jamie Peacock. He's had one or two um, altercations with Peacock in his time. Good run from McAlorum. Certainly was, but he needed to quick play the ball, and they're holding him down. Farrell. Here goes Gelling. Well, they're in a good position now to either opt for the early kick into the corner or will they go for the bomb? Well, Williams just uh, tries to place it between Hall and Hardacre, finds the post padding. Hardacre will bring it back as far as Ryan Sutton. Whoa! Back here, Wigan, wait 
You get a great example, Eddie, of the shared workload here. Kylie Luluai and Jamie Peacock still not, not yet onside as the backs bring the ball out. That'll be a chance for Jamie and Kylie to get a rest. Briscoe, Hall, they'll all go in, take the hard yards coming off the line. And Jamie will be able to contribute further up the field. Good deep kick. This has been called as a possible 40 20 by the referee, but it came the other way. And it went early. They went on the third, and that's good. They knew it. Look at that. That is a fantastic chase. No, 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 no. They just absolutely hammered Matty Bowen into the ground. Yes. Was Sinfield who led the chase. Oh, that's good work from Tompkins. He spun out of one challenge, and Peacock and Lulawai get in there with Watkins. Interesting that they've got Peacock and Lulawai on together. Not often that you see the two 37 year olds. Lining up no, at no, once. Nobody seems to be able to get at them, Eddie. Nobody seems to be able to get at them and, and, and tire them out. I keep hearing that, you know, Jamie Peacock, he's, he does so much workload, he can be a vulnerability in defence. He doesn't miss many, and nobody seems to be able to target them. Well, this is a golden opportunity. And it was oh. obvious that uh, Joe Moon had, had the arm underneath. I think so, I don't think so at all, Steve. Well, that, that seemed just to come out with no help from Joe Moon whatsoever, but Wigan won't be complaining. No, oh, you're right there. I hate to disagree with you, Eduardo. <laughs> it's not been the first time, it won't be the last. But this is, in, this is important now that Wigan, if they don't score on this first set, that they get the second set of six. Camp down there, apply a pressure. It's very rare they've been able to do that. Williams changes the direction of the attack. 16-6 for Huddersfield against the Dragons. Here is O'Loughlin, back it comes to Smith, now Bowen. And Bowen had great defence, but he slipped it away, just the same to Bateman. And Bateman will offload to Sutton, and here is Farrell. And Farrell put the kick in, and that's well, it's a knock-on by Sinfield. Play on! And another set. And that's a knock-on. Will well, they bring it back for the first, will they? Well, it was certainly played out by Sinfield. He looked as though he's got it. And then, then he's got the knock on, and then Wigan knock on, so he'd come back for that original offence. I think it was Williams that, uh, that actually pushed that ball away from Sinfield, and it was going backwards. So this should be Leeds head and feed, should he? Wait, guys. Half time at Saints, the champions 18 6 up. Wait, George. Here 14 4 okay, to the Leeds Rhinos over the Wigan Out. Warriors. Williams from the base of the scrum to Matty Smith. Here is Bateman. One, the utilisation now of Wigan in bringing the dummy runners into it. They've had very rare and, well, that was silly play. Cuthbertson, you've got to get out of the way. Once attack is completed, you can't hang around. And that's what he did. Look where the arm is. Then he pushed onto it. Brilliant from Bateman. It's his efforts that have got them that penalty, struggling to get to his feet. What can they do on the back of it? Mossop will play the ball here to Powell. He'll find Smith. Short ball from him. Chances, chances for Ryan Sutton. He's short. Hardacre did well, and Peacock made sure he couldn't spin out of it. Powell again gets the ball away to Smith. He gives it a bit of width and finds Bowen. Bowen, a jinking run, a stuttering. Oh, that's a trip. Down. It could be. Uh, it could be in a bit of bother here. Surely that's a ten minute in the sin bin. That was a deliberate. It wasn't as though it was on the action of him going through. He, he could have pulled out of this. Watch this. He definitely just swung that right leg. Can't well, Lulawai, is it? Well, we saw last week in the game there, there were a couple of trips there, it. and we mentioned that the referee's got uh, a full range of options here. Now, that's, that's probably a bit worse than we saw last week. Uh, you know, it could well be a 10-minute sim bin, this. Well, it should be. Never mind. It could be. Was it knee on? Was it just shin on shin? Rather, was that why? It makes no difference. No, no, I know it isn't. I'm just trying to find out why he's down. Matty Bowen. What's the matter with him? Well, he just had his leg kicked off. That's what's the matter with him. What do you mean? What's the matter with him? Well, I know he got tripped up. I'm just saying. Where was the contact made? It looked like it was shin on shin. If it was shin on shin, it's pretty painful. You, are, you do get at me once or twice, you, for no reason whatsoever. Take a breath. Powell waits a dummy half. Spreads it wide. 
Oh, nice play, nice play, Manfredi. Oh, good defence, good defence. Let's play on, let's play on, let's play on. Now then, was that a shoulder charge? Well, he certainly looked it. But, uh... No, it was a push. Watkins did well there. He went into Manfredi and uh, pushed him. No shoulder involved there. It was uh, two arms. Yep. He's got to be in touch slightly. Oh, Leeds have lost it. Oh, he'll come back for the knock-on. We spent a long time at their own end of the field, Leeds here. Tom Briscoe coming up with another mistake on the very first tackle. They faced with another six players inside their own 20. Look at this. We can put the best defenders to make that tackle from the scrum or lock in McAlorum to make sure they win that first challenge if they possibly can. And this side are under pressure right now. Okay, man, let's go. And again, we saw the ball carrying arm going into the defensive go. players. Bateman now for Wigan. One, move is it me or is this a bit scrappy? Yeah. Hold. Go. You're right. Powell to Smith, short ball, good ball, Sutton. What, what a, a tackle. tackle. What a tackle by Hardacre that was. Unbelievable defence. Powell again, Williams. Find Smith, here's Bowen. Bowen showed it to O'Loughlin, taking it on himself. Another good tackle in defence. Tremendous work this time by Joel Moon, and again, Anchami drops it. Hardacre, what an effort. Charlie's come up with the mistake. Paul Wellens very complimentary about Zach Hardegger's performance just a couple of weeks back, and he said it was his defensive duties that most impressed Wellens. The fact that as a fullback, he's not just looking to attack. We saw his brilliance in attack last week against Warren. It's his defence that makes him a standout and a candidate for international honours. Well, he'd be a candidate for the Man of Steel, wouldn't he? Along with probably Callum Watkins and, and uh, Adam Cuthbertson. And I was talking to a Super League coach today who also thought that Paul Ayton would rank in that uh, trio as well as one of the best players that Leeds have had this season. I thought Leeds were missing more. Maybe they've not in the first half. But I'm sure they will over the course of the season. Ayton was sensational for them in the games this year. And let's not forget that uh, Brian McDermott has not thrown on his ace card. He's yet to pull Rob Barrow out, and there's a lot of tired players out there. And Barrow is adept at making advantage of that. Ablett will disentangle himself from George Williams, played the ball to Sinfield. He finds Cuthbertson, who gives it to Maguire. And Maguire shaping to kick wide, and then Mossop gets to him. Sinfield again. Ward, nice change of direction from him now, and then he slips on the greasy surface. Little kick into the in-goal area, will Sinfield opt to do it on his own? Sinfield gives it to Maguire, Maguire slides the kick in, and very well watched by John Bateman. Yeah, it took it well, did Bateman. Won't be too happy with that, Brian McDermott. He knows that uh, he could have been a lot stronger. Little kick into, maybe towards the post. But the most frustrating thing about it, if you're a Wigan fan and the Wigan players, and I'm sure that the coach Sean Wayne realises, they've had so much opportunity in the last 15 minutes in good field position, and yet they've yet to add to their score. The final try. Smith thought about the long pass, Ablett cut out that option with a good run. Sutton goes down on tackle number five. Good defence from Leeds on show again here, so Matty Smith just hammers the ball downfield, it will elude Briscoe. Great kick. Great chase as well, look at that, look at the numbers. One. Down he goes. Sinfield into dummy half, Callum Watkins. Been kept quiet, hasn't he, Watkins? Manfredi throws himself into everything, doesn't he? Carrying the ball into that tackle on Watkins. They're missing Joe Burgess, but Dominic Manfredi, he can certainly step up into this team. Oh, another good one. Another high shot, is it here? Yep. On Garbutt. No doubt about it. By the, the skipper, Sean O'Loughlin. He would have felt that as well. And boy, wasn't that a great kick.
Look at the position the Rhinos have put themselves in now. Yes, and they're inside the last minute of the first half, and here comes Jamie Peacock. Well, Hardacre is coming out onto the left-hand side. Will it be an inside pass to Hardacre? Here is Maguire. There is Hardacre. He cuts back in field, and it flicks everywhere, dropped by Sinfield, went backwards, down through to Ryan Hall! Richard Silverwood and have a look at that possible knock-on. I think it's a try. But they have a try on the field. I think it's a try when they go upstairs too. What a beautiful little kick through. Sensational. Knew that there was only seconds remaining of this first half. Quality. Ah, oh, sensational. Well, they wanted to check the knock-on here uh, from Kevin Sinfield. Interestingly, the referee and Tufts have both ruled his play on in open play and now have the opportunity to review their original decision based on that. Well, it, it touches his right hand first, so that means it's going backwards. He, well, collects, he collects it cleanly there. We just need to look from the side and see where, where it hits the ground as opposed to where he, he touches it. It's not like a forward pass where we have to judge uh, the momentum or take momentum into account. Because it's a knock-on, it's a, a pure thing. Does it go towards the opponent's dead ball line? No, he goes backwards as far as I'm concerned. Well, I think at worst it goes sideways, so that's not towards the opponent's dead ball line. So, you know, the officials should have had confidence in the original decision and, and gone with it, in my opinion. What a great kick, though, from Kevin Sinfield. We'll check to see if he's onside, which he clearly is, and then through to the grounding. Check that. That's the process the video referee has to go through. Just from a rugby point of view, how clever is Ryan Hall to know when the ball gets there, he's backed off to come back to his own 20 metre line and wait because he has to get behind the ball. He's not just hanging around thinking the chance to attack's gone, it's over. Put himself back on side, and I think as he rolls over here, Challenge as well in the first effort, but the momentum of his body rolls over and I believe grounds it. Maybe there. there. Yeah. That'll be TOI, and uh, what a time to score. He did all he could to stop that, Josh Charnley. But I don't think he has. He hasn't. Tries given. Ryan Hall. Ryan Hall with his 13th try of the season. Needing just two now to enter the top five of Super League try scorers of all time. 166 in Super League at the moment. Only Danny Maguire has scored more Super League tries than him. Well, I think you can see quite clearly that when it gets to Sinfield, that the right fingers just flip it through. This is the incident, and it flips it, makes it go back, in and out, beautiful kick. You know, midway through the season when Brian McDermott put Kevin Sinfield on the bench, a lot of people wondered why. And maybe sometimes it's the injustice and you want to prove to your coach that you can still do it. And boy, Kevin Sinfield has come back bigger and better. And surely he will add the extras. Well, it's a tough call, that, but uh, if anyone can, he can. And he does. Your confidence is well placed, Mr. Stevenson. 20 points to four, leads turn round at half time. Well, Ronnie and the girls are happy, and I uh, don't think that uh, Wigan will be too happy with the concession of that try in the final seconds of that first half.